Hello, welcome to Mother's Day, May the 10th, 2020. We're still obeying COVID restrictions. We were blessed last week with our outdoor drive-in service, but we're back in for the video service this week. We may have other options as the weeks go by, and we hope to be in the church very soon. So today I offer this prayer for Mother's Day. Let us pray. Oh Lord our God, we give you thanks for all those who gave us birth. Lord, many of our mothers have been sources of strength and courage, wisdom and education to us. Lord, some of us had mothers who were not able to impart these things to us, perhaps because of absence or other things. Lord, help us in every way to forgive what we perceive as the shortcomings of our mothers and celebrate the glory of love that surely every mother has. We pray for all those mothers, Lord, and indeed fathers who are bringing up children in this day and time. We pray, Lord, for their patience. We pray, Lord, that they celebrate the small things in life. We pray, Lord, for their strength to get through these difficult times in one piece, loving one another, glorifying you, and continuing to teach their children. To teach their children to follow you, O Lord. To teach them the faith of Jesus Christ. To teach them the life lived in the spirit. To teach them to be part of the beloved community. Lord God, we pray for all those mothers who, for whatever reason, were unable to mother their own children. We lift them up to you and for their children also. We pray for those mothers who were surrogates in some way, a teacher, a Sunday school teacher, a neighbor, a friend, who took care of other mothers' children on many occasions and cared for them and loved them. And Lord, we pray for those Mothers who have had difficulties in loving their children. We pray, Lord, give them strength and courage. Lord, as all of us are children of our mother, give us peace, patience, and kindness towards our mother. Help us to forgive whatever perceived wrongs we may have. And help us to love the time we have together with our moms. Lord God, we are so grateful. We come to you, Lord, and we pray that there will be a blessing on all those who are mothers. And Lord, for women without children of their own who have taken care of us, who have shown us love and kindness. Lord, we're grateful. And for all the women of churches, Lord, houses of worship in every faith, who with or without children of their own have given up their own time and energy to raise us in the faith. Lord, we're grateful. Lord, we pray for all the new mothers who are bringing up their young children in this difficult time. Give them strength and patience. We pray, Lord, that this coronavirus pandemic will be short-lived. We pray, Lord, that we'll have a vaccine in due time. And we pray, Lord, that we, we, we will be sensible in carrying out our reopening of churches and schools and other beloved institutions. God, give us wisdom. 
Give us the wisdom with the heart of a mother. In Christ's name. comes from the Gospel of John. I'm veering away from Peter for a little bit, but we'll get back there. First Peter. In the Gospel of John today, we have John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Jesus says to us, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. 
Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me, that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The message for us today, in this time, we hear God speak about His Father. Excuse me, we hear Jesus speak about His Father. But we hear Jesus loving his disciples, being present from them, teaching them, perhaps with the heart of his own mother, Mary. Jesus says that our hearts are not to be troubled. It's difficult in this day and time for our hearts not to be troubled. We are troubled daily by what we see we are troubled daily by the count of death of so many people just in our nation, climbing to over 60,000 deaths in five months. It is unthinkable. More deaths than occurred during the Vietnam War in the almost 20 years of that total struggle. Jesus tells us that he goes to prepare a place for us. A place for us. There is a place for us in the heart of Jesus Christ. There is a place for us in the heart of our Father God. And there is a place for us in the life of the Spirit. He goes to prepare a place for us where our life will always be in the heart of God. And he says to the disciples, you know where I'm going? And Thomas says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And Jesus says to him, I am the way, the road. I am the truth, and I am the life. The way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is both the means by which we come to the Father, and he is the road that we take to go and live in the light of the Father, in the power of the Holy Spirit. He is the truth. He is the truth of God. That God sends to us his son to teach us, to heal us, to bless us and encourage us, and finally to give himself for us that we may live in joyful obedience forevermore. And he is. 
the life. Jesus is life. In and of himself, he is life. And he asks that through the life-giving Holy Spirit, that we take up the life that he lived, a life of mercy and teaching, a life of joy and service. Our lives should be like Christ's. We should walk the road he walked. And we know that his road led to suffering. I've never known a person who never experienced suffering. There is suffering in the world. And as 1 Peter's letter says, as Peter's first letter says, if you suffer for what is right, it is good. But if you suffer for what you did wrong, it is not good. We can suffer for what we know is the truth. But sometimes we suffer, our suffering is of our own making. We should have the life of Christ in us. And the life of Christ in us should be visible beyond us. For us to be the way, the road, is an image that invites us to invite others to join us on that road, on that way with Jesus Christ. And share the truth and the life of Jesus Christ with others. Share our faith in the living God, in his son Jesus Christ, and his spirit that dwells within us. Philip says to Jesus, Lord, show me the Father, and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? It's a challenge, I think, to us. To ask the question, those who know us, would they know us as disciples of Christ? Jesus says, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? What if someone said to me, show me you're a Christian? What if someone said to you, show me you're a Christian? We would ask them, has my life thus far not shown you that I follow the one called Jesus? And they would challenge us, perhaps, to show them again. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, do I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his work. There's the clue. Do we do the work of the Father? Do we resemble the Son, Jesus Christ? Is the Spirit of the living God evident in us? Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. In fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and will do even greater works because Jesus goes to the Father. The life of a Christian disciple should be a life that reflects the love and the power and the patience and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. At its best, we're called to resemble the living God. We're called to be an icon, an image of Christ himself. Not necessarily in our outside appearance, but in the appearance of our hearts and our daily lives. How we live, how we speak, how we help, how we trust God. To be a Christian is to take on a new persona. 
We're raised in a household and we have family traditions. and Some are good and some are not so good. But we're called to be part of the family of God and reflect our Father and His Son and the Spirit in our lives. To carry on the tradition of love and self-sacrifice and giving ourselves to others in ways that are powerful icons, images, symbols, evidence of our life with God. Jesus shows us the way. He shows us the life of the Father. He is the road that we must trod. He is the goal to which we endeavor. His life, His way, is where we're going. And if someone can say to us one day, I see Jesus in you, then truly we have shown them not only Jesus, but the Father. And we have become an icon, a living image of the love of God. Let us hope and pray that in all our lives, at least once says to us, at least once someone says to us, I see God in you. Not so that we can glorify and take pride, but so we know that we have humbled ourselves before the Lord and we have taken the love of Christ on the road. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Jesus, you change everything. Shame, drowning the streams that made me born again. 